In this video, we are going to solve this problem where g of s, h of s is given. Okay, in this case, they have given k as a variable and uh, they have asked if this system is connected in closed loop, what are the values of k for which that closed loop system will be stable? Okay, that is the one. And to start with, let's see this transfer function. This seems to be in pole zero form okay so we'll convert this and write it into time constant form okay k and take two common from this five common from this and ten common from this and we can write two times five is ten ten times ten is hundred okay hundred times s times one plus point five times s one plus point two times s 1 plus 0 0.1 times s okay this is how the transfer function looks when it is written in time constant form fine and now if you see the s plane and uh, nyquist contour it's good to actually draw a nyquist contour as soon as we are given a problem because it gives us a sense where we are going through okay now in this case we have a pole at the origin so what we do is we take this detour and take this as the modified Nyquist contour for this problem. Okay, as we are having a pole here, pole here. Okay. Now this is how the directions we take, and this values are tending to infinity. This section, section one, section two, section three, and this is section four. Fine. Right? Now for this, now let's rewrite this. Okay, we can write this as k over hundred times one over s times one plus 0.5 s times one plus 0.2 s times one plus 0.1 s. Okay, now let's take this function. Let's deal with this k by 100 term later. And this seems to be in a very standard form which we have seen, which is in the form of 1 over s times 1 plus st1, where t1 is 0.5, times 1 plus st2, where t2 here is 0.2, and uh, here 1 plus st3, okay, and t3 is 0.1. Now, we know how the plot for this looks like. <clears throat> let's draw this here okay the plot for this looks like this and take a reference point and uh, this point is going to be minus of t1 plus t2 plus t3 in this case 0.5 plus 0.2 plus 0.1 it will be minus 0 0.8 okay this value and the plot for this one looks like this okay and the arrow marks are in this direction fine and we should we know already we have computed what is the frequency at which this plot crosses minus 180 degrees or plus 180 degrees <coughs> that omega we used to name it as minus 180 or any plus 180 and that we know the formula that is 1 over square root of t1 t2 plus t2 t3 plus t1 t3 you can remember this or you can derive it then and there okay whichever is best suited for you you can do that now instead of calculating omega i do like to calculate omega square because we don't know the magnitude at this point what is this magnitude so when we want to substitute this omega value into the magnitude, we are going to substitute for omega square. Now let's see what this function looks when it is written in omega terms. Omega 1 square root of, okay, this is going to be the magnitude 1. 1 plus 0.5 square times omega square, okay. And square root of 1 plus 0.1, okay, this is 0.2 square times omega square over square root of 1 plus 0.1 square omega square 
Now we want to know magnitude at 180 degrees. So substitute omega with omega 180 degrees. Now what is omega square 180? Let's substitute T1, T2, T3 values in this and we will get to know what is this omega. And omega square comes out to be 100 over 70. Okay. This is the value of omega square. And now this plot we have seen is only for the section 1. Now for section 2, we're going to have a dot here. Okay. At origin. And the third term, we're going to have exact mirror image of this first plot having this real axis as the reference. Okay. Now the mirror image looks like this. Okay. It looks like this. Now it goes in this direction. Okay. And now for we have covered section 1, section 2, section 3. And for section 4, as we have only one single pole at origin, we are going to have phase change from plus 90 to minus 90. Okay. In general, we can say 180 degree shift. Okay. If we try doing this, we get a plot like this. Okay. Now the arrow mark directions are important and this are in this direction. Okay. Now the most important thing to note here will be the magnitude of this plot at this point where it is crossing plus or minus 180 degrees line. Okay. So we want to find out the magnitude of M at 180 degrees. If we calculate this by substituting omega square uh, 100 over 17, we are going to get this M approximately equals to 0 0.9457. Let's write this approximately 0 0.95, okay, for our calculations. Now, we know what is the magnitude at this point, okay. This is, this is going to be 0 0.95, okay. Now, th the whole thing we have done is only for this function which is in the dotted lines. Now, we have to multiply this with k over 100. Now, how does that plot look? Let's see how it looks. Okay. Meanwhile, let me rub off the sum of the calculations. Now, considering this k over 100 to this plot, when we multiply that, we get the same exact plot. Let me redraw it here in a bigger way to make it clear. Okay. And taking the imaginary exact mirror image of it. Okay. And uh, this will be corresponding one for the arc at the origin and this is the point and uh, this is the magnitude which is important okay and now if you multiply this point with k over 100 this point the magnitude becomes k over 100 times 0.95 okay this is the value now minus 1 will it lie here or here depends on what value you choose for k okay now suppose k this whole value okay magnitude i mean the magnitude value is less than 1 then minus 1 is going to be here right because this point is going to be less than magnitude is going to be less than 1 so, the number of encirclements will be 0, which will be equal to number of zeros of the characteristic equation minus number of poles on the right half of S plane for the G of S, H of S. And this is 0, we know by looking at this transfer function where we don't have any poles in the right half of S plane. And uh, as n is 0, Z is going to be 0. In that case, okay, the system is going to be stable. Now, we know what is the condition for that, okay, k over 100 times 0.95 should be less than 1. 
Now what is the value of k? k should be less than 100 over 0.95. Okay. Now we know the condition for the value of k for which the system is going to be stable. Okay. Now, now if let me rub this off again. Okay. And now, if k over 100 times 0.95 is greater than 1, okay, then this minus 1 will be here and this point will be, magnitude will be greater than 1. So, the number of encirclements you are going to see n will be equal to 2 and we know that n, anyway. This is in clockwise direction. So we take it as positive 2 and n equals z minus p. And we know that p is 0, right? The number of poles in the right of a west plane of this g of such of us. And z is going to be what? 2. From this we can say that if k value is greater than 100 over 0.95, then the system is going to be unstable. The system when I mean when g of s h of s is used to make a closed loop transfer function, okay, our closed loop system, that closed loop system is going to be unstable if this k value is greater than 100 over 0.95, okay, and the system will be stable if k is less than 100 over 0.95, fine. Now, if you take a line here, okay, in the positive axis, if you draw a k line, let's take a line or which k values change from 0 to infinity okay in this line if you take a point where k is 100 or 0.95 then below this values the system is going to be stable and above this values the system is going to be unstable okay this unstable region and this is going to be stable region fine 